That was the last time the girl Wendy ever saw him. For a little longer she tried, for his sake, not to have growing pains, and she felt she was untrue to him when she got a prize for general knowledge. But the years came and went without bringing the careless boy, and when they met again, Wendy was a married woman, and Peter was no more to her than a little dust in the box in which she had kept her toys. Wendy was grown up. You need not be sorry for her. She was one of the kind that likes to grow up. In the end, she grew up of her own free will a day quicker than other girls. All the boys were grown up and done for by this time, so it's scarcely worthwhile saying anything more about them. You may see the twins and Nibs and Curly any day going to an office, each carrying a little bag and an umbrella. Michael is an engine driver, slightly married a lady of title, and so he became a lord. You see that judge in a wig coming out at the iron door? That used to be Tootles. The bearded man who doesn't know any story to tell his children was once John. Wendy was married in white with a pink sash. It is strange to think that Peter did not alight in the church and forbid the bands. Years rolled on again, and Wendy had a daughter. This ought not to be written in ink, but in a golden splash. She was called Jane, and always had an odd, inquiring look, as if from the moment she arrived on the mainland she wanted to ask questions. When she was old enough to ask them, they were mostly about Peter Pan. She loved to hear of Peter, and Wendy told her all she could remember in the very nursery from which the famous flight had taken place. It was Jane's nursery now, for her father had bought it at the three per cents from Wendy's father, who was no longer fond of stairs. Mrs. Darling was now dead and forgotten. There were only two beds in the nursery now, Jane's and her nurse's, and there was no kennel, for Nana also had passed away. She died of old age, and at the end she had been rather difficult to get on with, being very firmly convinced that no one knew how to look after children except herself. Once a week Jane's nurse had her evening off, and then it was Wendy's part to put Jane to bed. That was the time for stories. It was Jane's invention to raise the sheet over her mother's head and her own, thus making a tent, and in the awful darkness to whisper, what do we see now? I don't think I see anything tonight, says Wendy, with a feeling that if Nana were here she would object to further conversation. Yes, you do, says Jane. You see when you were a little girl. That is a long time ago, sweetheart, says Wendy. Oh, me, how time flies. Does it fly? asks the artful child. The way you flew when you were a little girl. The way I flew? Do you know, Jane, I sometimes wonder whether I ever did really fly. Yes, you did. The dear old days when I could fly. Why can't you fly now, Mother? Because I'm grown up, dearest. When people grow up, they forget the way. Why do they forget the way? Because they are no longer gay and innocent and heartless. It is only the gay and innocent and heartless who can fly. What is gay and innocent and heartless? I do wish I was gay and innocent and heartless. Or perhaps Wendy admits she does see something. I do believe, she says, that it is this nursery. I do believe it is, says Jane. Go on. They are now embarked on the great adventure of the night, when Peter flew in looking for his shadow. The foolish fellow, says Wendy, tried to stick it on with soap, and when he could not he cried, and that woke me, and I sewed it on for him. You have missed a bit, interrupts Jane, who now knows the story better than her mother. When you saw him sitting on the floor crying, what did you say? I sat up in bed and I said, boy, why are you crying? Yes, that was it, says Jane, with a big breath. And then he flew us all away to the Neverland, and the fairies, and the pirates, and the redskins, and the mermaid's lagoon, and the home under the ground, and the little house. Yes, which did you like best of all? 
I think I like the home under the ground best of all. Yes, so do I. What was the last thing Peter ever said to you? The last thing he ever said to me was, Just always be waiting for me, and then some night you will hear me crowing. Yes, but alas, he forgot all about me. Wendy said it with a smile. She was as grown up as that. What did his crow sound like? Jane asked one evening. It was like this, Wendy said, trying to imitate Peter's crow. No, it wasn't, Jane said gravely. It was like this. And she did it ever so much better than her mother. Wendy was a little startled. My darling, how can you know? I often hear it when I am sleeping, Jane said. Ah, yes, many girls hear it when they are sleeping, but I was the only one who heard it awake. Lucky you, said Jane.